Okay, good night. Welcome everybody to another edition of our, our Zoom show. I'd like to thank again uh, Mayor Gabba and John Ari for arranging this show um, and Jonathan Lamb for update, upgrading us to Zoom. Um, tonight we're studying Parashat Vayera. Uh, and I'd like to dedicate the show to Elon Ishmael Tripko Bachayna. Rach Hashem Tinichena Amen. And I would like to also dedicate the Rafa Shema. Um, for Gabriela Naomi Batlea Malka, Elisha Batsheva Batrivka, Pika Ojni Batrozet, and Claudine uh, Bat Hana Ruhama. And also for Miriam Lea Sekte Bat Rachel. Miriam? Miriam Lea Sekte Bat Rachel. Miriam Lea Sekte Bat Rachel. Kelna Rafan Elem, for the Nevi Fata Gufa Kovalavo, and for Kolam Israel, everybody needs a Fuash Lema. So Amen. Tonight, Torah should be for their credit and for the benefit. Now, tonight, uh, very excited about this parasha. There was a lot to speak about, but I want to speak a little bit about the Akedat Yitzchak and maybe tie it in with a few things in this week's parasha. We've got the, the three angels that come and visit Avraham Avinu, and uh, Raphael comes to the report of Avraham to heal Avraham. Michael comes to tell him about Sarah, that she's going to have a baby, and Gabriel comes to turn over Sdom. Now, uh, he serves them a meal. What does he serve them in the meal? He sort of three cows in order to get three tongues. Shlosha parim, shlosha leshonot, tongues, and with chardal. And then he says, chemat bakar, he gives them milk. So all the elder Rishonim ask how come he's giving their milk and meat together and he's doing Akhnasat Orchim and we learn from here Gdola Akhnasat Orchim Yoter Mekabalat Pnei Ashkina but that means Hashem came to visit Abraham on his uh, third test um, one of his tests was Brit Mila and Hashem came to give a visit him Bikur Cholim and Abraham said listen wait a minute I have guests I'm going to go to my guest we learn from here Akhnasat Orchim the big value of the Chesed of, of Abraham of Achnasat Ochim. But I want to speak about um, the Akedah. The Akedah was the biggest Nisayon of Ravam Avinu. Asara Nisyonot. It Nasa Avram Avinu. Ten tests. And the number one biggest test that he had was the test of the Akedah. Now, we all know the story and we read it every day in Shachrit. We read it on Rosh Hashanah. Um, and the schut, the merit of Akedat Yitzchak, it stands to us even till this very day. All the generations, everything. This was a big mo movement over here. And I want to study a little bit deeper. And I want to go into maybe the, the sod, the hidden meaning it, of the pshat according to the Zohar and Arizal. Now, I don't usually do this in the Shio. Usually we just do pshat or remez. Sometimes we do drush. But... Occasionally, I like to go a little bit into the secrets of the Kabbalah. Not that I'm a big Kabbalist myself, but I think it's important to know that all of the Torah has a deeper hidden meaning that we didn't understand. And even some of the, the sources which are going to quote in the Shio, I don't fully understand myself, but I think it's good that every once in a while we learn some Torah and study Torah that we just appreciate how much it's beyond our understanding um, the, the hidden secrets of the Torah. And also this shows how clearly the Torah is given by Kadosh Baruch Hu. So Blaise Hashem, we're going to see how it all gets connected. Uh, and I hope you all enjoy this show. So the, the final Akedah, the final Nisayon, number 10. Obviously it goes up in levels. It says, Vayelokim Nisa et Avraham. Which means God tested Abraham. Now I'm going to ask you, my friends, and this question is open to the audience because uh, there's many answers given to this question. Why is it called Nisayon Shel Avraham? Why is it called the test of Avraham? At the end of the day, who was on the Akedah? Yitzchak. Right? Yeah, it says, Yitzhak was meant to be offered up as a korban. 
אני אעשה דה גויינגה תגדר, וילכו שניהם יחדיו, ואני יצחק, אברה, יצחק סיסטה אברהם אבינו. הנה האש והנה העצים, והיה עשה לעולה. I can see the fire, I can see the wood. Was he accompanied by, with Ishmael and the servant? Eliezer. And then when he told him, Shvu po'im achamo. Yes. I'm just wondering. No, what was your question? I didn't hear. Repeat, please. Wasn't he accompanied by Ishmael? Okay, so you're quite right. They were accompanied Avram, Yitzchak, Ishmael, and Eliezer until the point when they reached Har Moria. Har Moria, he said, "You two wait here. I'm going off with Yitzchak." And then he says, "Ve'yichu l'shnei mechadav." And even after Yitzchak asked Avram Avinu, "Listen, where, where's the seh? We're going to bring a korban. We need the korban." And then he says, eh, "Beni." That's the that's the Roman where he says that it's it's going to be a surprise. The korban is going to be Yitzchak. And then Rashi says, when the Pasuk says, it says, it says, it says Rashi, that they went together even after Yitzchak knew that he was going to be the korban, he still went happily as he did beforehand. The same feelings. So you see, it was a tremendous uh, sacrifice for Yitzchak Avinu. So why do we call it Nisa et Avram? That it was Avram's Nisayon. Why is it called the Avram's number 10, number 10 biggest test, Nisayon? And it's not even called like the first small Nisayon of Yitzhak. I mean, we, we, should be big Nisayon for Yitzhak. Is the question clear? Yes, Abi. Okay, so I want a suggestion. So I've got seven answers over here. So I want you to get one of them. We've got, we've got five people in the shield. Everyone get one answer. Why is it called the Nisayon for Abraham? Why was the test bigger for Abraham than for Yitzchak? The, the, obvious, the obvious thing is, it's his own. Abraham had been Chad Yehidcha. This is the son where, where you, 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 suppose you were promised that uh, you're going to have all your descendants coming oh. from. Okay, excellent. So Yaakov is saying a beautiful answer. In fact, the, the, this answer also was given by the Sefer Panim Yafot. It says, because Avraham Avinu was promised to be Yitzchak Yikara Lechazera. So you're going to have uh, a nation boom before you, and it's going to be from Yitzchak. And now, Hashem tells Avraham, listen, uh, I need you to offer up Yitzchak. What do you mean offer up Yitzchak? You told me that he's going to bring all my children. So that was the big test of Avraham Avinu. They didn't have to question HaKadosh Baruch Hu by contradicting his promises. Now, Yitzchak didn't have that. So therefore, one of the answers, that's why it was a big test for Avraham Avinu. So, Yaakov Gavag. Can we have another suggestion, please? We've got another five Tirutim over here. At least, yeah, let's another one from the crowd. That was a good start, Yaakov. Uh, uh, Rabbi, I think, like, what part of the Nisayon is for Avraham to do what he was preaching to others not to do. Because oh, at the time uh, when they do Avodah Zarah, they were like sacrificing kids. Very good. Thank you, very good. And, and he's getting... was against it. So now he was told to do what he is against and telling others not to do. So uh, that's all, part of the Nisayon is to follow Hashem, even though he's telling Avram to do opposite. Exactly. It's against what you're preaching. The, the whole life you're preaching one thing and now you're changing your mind and people laugh at you. Uh, you're not a man of your values, of your morals, but if it's a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that's the right thing to do. So you change. doesn't matter. It's embarrassing, not embarrassing. Very good, Mo. That's another beautiful answer. But the, the question is, is, at what point yes. you can say that the, the mitzvah actually happened? Because if you think about it, most of the time, it, it, it's hard, it hasn't had, it didn't have any part in it. So Real good. So the first three days, basically, Yitzchak was out of the picture. So he woke up in the morning, he woke up early, he took the boys, he chopped the woods, he walked three days, he faced, he faced different challenges during those faced different challenges, you know. gone, very good. So, so, so after what, the point, up to, even, even when Yitzchak asked him, he said, Elohim yirelo aselo labni, which means that even then, he tried yeah. to put him out of the, not to worry him. So basically, it was his mitzvah. Just up, only the very last moment when Yitzchak realized 
that okay but Yitzchak could have backed out he said listen dad you got to change change your plan I'm not doing any korban over here he could have done that right and he could have run off and he was a big boy at the time it, it, 37 it, it, it years old it doesn't matter it would still qualify you, you for cannot... Abraham for Abraham <laughs> yes it would qualify for Abraham 100 percent but Yitzhak still was willing to offer himself up for Akadosh Baruch Hu. But, but the it's test not was... Even but... It's not even mentioned as a test of Yitzhak. It's all credited to Avraham Avinu. Yeah, but, but that, that, that's applied to everything we do. You cannot control the outcome. You can control your effort to do. Very good. Very good. That is going to Avraham Avinu. The question here we're asking is the, is the question of the Zohar Akadosh. And all the Rishonim asked this question. Why is not attributed this Nisayon to Yitzchak? At the end of the day, Yitzchak was willing to offer his, himself as a Korban. So everyone talks about the Nisayon of Abraham, the number 10 tests of Abraham, that he had to do, Akedat Yitzchak, who he was willing to offer up his son. Or Yitzchak was willing to offer up himself. And why is that not credited to him as a Nisayon showing his love for Kadosh Baruch So I, I missed the question, sorry. But, but it, it could be a Kibbut Avraham even. So, which means that it was, you know, you, you could actually mix the reasons in a way. You understand? It's not, it's not as strong mitzvah as, as the mitzvah of Abraham. By the Why? Why? That's what we're trying to understand. Let me just explain a question to Joe. He just joined us oh, now. Joe, sorry. We, we're asking a question that the number 10 test of Abraham, his biggest test was Akedat Yitzchak, where he was asked to offer up Yitzchak, his own son, his loved son, uh, to, as a korban to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And... Yitzchak, when he found out at the end that he was the one who was going to be the Korban, he was willing to be offered up. And then he was stopped by a Malach um, and they switched the Korban. The question we're asking is why is this referred to as the biggest test of Avraham Avinu? Yitzchak also, he sacrificed himself. So it's very nice, big credit to Avraham Avinu for his love of God. He was willing to give up his beloved son. But what about Yitzchak? How about credit to him? He was a big boy. At the time, he was 37 years old. And he was willing to give up himself, sacrifice himself. So Akedat Yitzhak should be credited as a, one of the big tests of Yitzhak. And it doesn't even but get but mentioned. Didn't you, just said, didn't you just said he had, he had, he had no idea what's going, what was going on? At the beginning. Initially, what, he had no yeah, idea. At what point did he actually knew that something is going to happen? Okay, so you ask uh, this question. Uh, but, but maybe... Yitzhak wasn't obliged, obliged to the Nisayon. Basically, he had the choice. Maybe at any point, if he would say no. Yes. So oh, he, he was allowed to say no. Okay, so hey, Mo, you're on fire over here. There's a, a Gemara in Kiddushin. It says, That means if you go an option to back out, it's easier because every moment, you know, you can just back out and say no. But if you're obligated to do something, you're mitzvah, you're commanded. And here Avraham Avinu was commanded. He had to do it. it was that not, was his option. He was not commanded. He was in his, that, he, he, heard it, he, he heard it as commanded. From HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yeah, he but says, that, he was not commanded. He said, He said, take your yeah, son. But, that that, but, but the Yomer, the Yomer, it's a soft language. And now it's a request. It's yes. not Vaidaber. Uh, if it was written by Daber Lech, it's some it's Nachon. one. Na, it's. But here still we see that this answer is given by the Panim Yafot. That because he was commanded, he was Metsuveva also. And Yitzhak was not, not commanded. If you're like, you know, option, if you're volunteering, you can always get back up. But if it's your duty and you have to do it, it's harder for him. That's one but of the answers. It's Sayon. Because, because it was in a soft language. And it wasn't because if you command someone to do something, so you don't give him the nisayon, the choice, because you give him a command. But if you ask and he says yes, so it means that then he follows because he wants to follow. He wants to take it as yeah, a now, command. Now, you're saying something different now. It's not the answer that he gives is that he was commanded. And he's, that clearly says, He told him. Now you're saying he gave him like an option, doesn't sound like it in the Pasuk. It says, This is what you need to do. Bring him up as a korban. And Yitzhak wasn't told that. That's one way where it was easier. Uh, maybe we'll just give two small answers and then I want to give you the answer of the Zohar Kadosh. Um, maybe, Joe, you want to say something? No. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm on track now. Okay. So, two other answers. One answer is 
was given by Chazal that the what's what's harder to go and do something kum say or sheva al say which means Abraham Avinu had to go positively and do the action. Yitzhak was passive. Now to stay, stand by and just be passive and not do anything, okay, that's already one difficult, but to go and do the action, that's a higher madriga. Um, but the one of my favorite answers, I think this is also given by, this is one of my favorite books, Shavay Aaron. I can share with you. So here, this is a beautiful answer. Yeah, there's something which is called Yisurim She'en Le'em Kitzva and Yisurim She'yesh Le'em Kitzva which means Yisurim is suffering suffering which has no end to, to it is much more difficult to a suffering which has an end and the concept is if, if you know how long it's going to last for then it's bearable if you don't know how long it's going to last for it's already unbearable or for its extended period of time it's unbearable the pain of the suffering but if it's a one-time pain, even though it's very painful, but you know, it's just going to last for a short amount of time, it's much more bearable. I get that Yitzhak for Yitzhak Avinu to give up himself as a korban. Okay, that's a one-time shot. He has to do that and that's it. But for Avon Avinu to live with the pain for the rest of his life every day, to know what's happened, that he's missing a son, he could have had a son, that was much more unbearable. That was a, one of the answers. Was he, but, was he going to do it reluctantly, can ask? Oh, so... Hmm. Was it going to do reluctantly? It was it something which he was forced to. So we have to understand that Abraham yeah, yeah. was called action, Abraham. Once he Sorry? was instructed, once he was instructed, he said, "Okay, all right, I'll do it. Let's, let's consider it done." Yeah. So there's proofs from the pasuk that it wasn't like that. How do you know that? So one way it says that Abraham Avi, Abraham was called my 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 love. The one who loves me was Abraham. He got up extra early. Okay? Now, if you get up early, that shows excitement. It shows you're happy to do it. Okay? It doesn't show that you're reluctant to do it. Um, I, I once heard somebody saying, what does it mean he woke up in the morning? The Chiddush is that he went to sleep at night. If you know this is the last night you're going to have with your son, you know, stay up all night, be with him, uh, I don't know, play with him, uh, learn Torah with him, or you're going to sleep. Is, is that what you're doing? But we have to say, Avraham Avinu, he was our father, and he's on a different level to us. And, and but, but, also to... did, but also, he didn't want to disturb its heart. Why would he? What? Where would he disturb you now? You know. Oh, that... so very nice. No, so Gilad is bring a nice point. He's saying it will be strange for your Why are we up all night? You know what's going to happen in the morning. And, and his so, wife. Okay, so it could be that. Oh no, so that's why we tell his wife. But one of the answers that I was heard that Avraham Avinu did everything in his right time. You know, in the night time, there's time for sleeping. In the morning, you wake up early and you do your mitzvot. And he did his love. Now, he, he saw his whole life as a service of God. Think about it. He was miracle boy. What do I mean by miracle boy? His existence was a miracle. He was thrown into a fire by Nimrod. At a very young age, according to Midrash, three years old, uh, he already... Uh, claimed the existence of the creator he was thrown in a furnace and he came out alive he said my whole life is for Akadosh Baruch Hu. whatever you want I'm doing it and I'll do it happily because I appreciate everything that's been given by God now when we're studying this parasha of Avraham Avinu we have to aspire to that Avinu is our father that means we are his blood there's inside of us a part of Avraham Avinu that's what we need to live up to. When am I going to reach the, the actions, my actions, the actions of my father? Now I want to share with you this uh, Midrash, sorry, Gemara in Sanhedrin. So Mugilad mentioned this. Kachna, enna ela lashon bakasha. Please. Amalu akadish baruchu. Please do me this favor, okay? Nisiti chakame nisyanot ve'amad etabayim. I gave you a few tests, you passed all of them. Just please pass the last one. Don't let me down. This is going to be the most difficult one. I don't want people to say that he, he didn't do anything. Look, he failed his last one. That means they're all rubbish. Now, how do you explain his Gemara? 
How can you explain that? What do you mean there's nothing in Mamash Barishonim? He had nine tests. He passed nine tests. Okay, so one of them it was a very difficult one. He didn't manage to pass it. But he was willing to go into a fire, into a furnace. He left his homeland not knowing where he was going to go. Uh, he was left into famine. And he didn't ask the Kaddish Baruch Hu, well, you know, you promised me riches and now there's no food to eat. They took his wife, Paro, and he didn't ask against the Kaddish Baruch Hu, Lord, here, here, achar mi why are you treating me like this? He was chased by the kings. Um, he was offered the, all the riches of Saddam and he didn't take anything just for Kiddush Hashem. All of these great things Avraham Avinu did Nine tests. Okay, one of them, it was difficult for him. So what does it mean? In by Mamash, it was like he did nothing. Hashem saying, Kachna, please pass this test for me. I need you to do it. Get, get me 10 out of 10. Well, 90 is good. 90% is good, no? How do we understand this, Gemara? And another question is, well, what is the big big test of Avraham Avinu? You see many people... Um, even in nowadays, maybe you know people like this who survivors of the Holocaust and or people that were willing to give up their lives for Judaism. People were asked throughout the generations, you know, uh, it's not the first time the Jews were being persecuted and asked to give up their religion uh, in Spain, in Germany, uh, way before that in the Crusades. And people were willing to give up their lives for, for Hashem. So what's the big deal of Avraham of, you know? What are these tests? Everyone did it. So Rabbi Bilajan says something. What's the difference in Pirkei Avot? Listen very carefully to the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Asara Nisyonot Nitnasa Avraham Avinu Alav HaShalom. Who's him Avraham Avinu? And then before that, there's another Mishnah which says, Asara Darot Minoch Vaad Avraham. Ten tests from Onach to Avraham. Why does it say Noch Avraham? It doesn't say Avraham Avinu. Sometimes it says Avraham, sometimes it says Avraham Avinu. Why is it called Avraham Avinu? Why do we call Lavan, Lavan Avinu? Is this is the same uh, lineage? Uh, if you think about it, Avraham was the grandfather, yeah, of uh, Yaakov. Okay, uh, and Lavan was the grandfather of, your, of Yosef. You know, Yaakov was his father, Yitzhak was his grandfather. So Yitzhak and Yitzhak Avinu and Lavan Avinu is the same lineage. You know, I always had this as a child, you know, one we call Lavan Avinu. He's also a grandfather, Saba Lavan. You know, you got Saba Yitzhak, Saba Lavan. So what's Avinu? Avinu doesn't just mean he's your birth father, your birth grandfather or great grandfather, whatever it is now. Avinu is the, 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 the traits of Avraham Avinu was passed down to the children. The Pasuk says in Mishle, mitalech tzadik, that if the tzaddik goes in his in righteousness, betumo, wholeheartedly, then his sons afterwards, they're, they're, they're fortunate because they followed. That means when the father passed the test, he gets to one level. The child continues from that. You know, all the knowledge and wisdom you gain in your life experience, you educate your son. So he already starts one step ahead from where you started off. That's how it should be. So he said the nature of Avraham Avinu, he passed on to his son. So when Avraham Avinu was willing to give up himself in the fire of furnace, that gets passed down to Yitzhak. So when Yitzhak has the, the ability to give up himself on the, on the Korban, the Akedah, where does he get that from? His father. He, from his father, exactly, Joe. And all the generation, all the Jews that were willing to give up their lives for Judaism, where did they get that from? Avraham Avinu. Exactly from Avraham Avinu. So That's Avraham Avinu, he was the one who put that nature. That's why he's called Avraham Avinu. Oh, it's from Yitzchak. They, they received it. Midat HaGvura. Midat HaGvura, but where does that Midat HaGvura come from in Yitzchak? It comes from Avraham. That's why he's called Avraham Avinu, because Avraham, he went into the Kifshan Aish. Do we see that? And now you're right, for by Yitzhak, he was nature, he was Gvoa, maybe it was even a drop easier for him. Because the Gvoa is the power to stand up for the truth, for what is right. Where do we get the opportunity? You know, people, maybe now, especially I know people in America, they just want to get up and move to Israel. 
or people in London, you know, these communities in Ranana, in, in Netanya, in uh, Yerushalayim, in Beit Shemesh, totally English speaking or French speaking. You, you go on the bus, you don't see, you don't hear Hebrew. Everyone's uh, English or American, South African. Where do people get that desire just to go and move up to Eretz Israel? That comes from Lech Lecha Me'artzecha. Lech Lecha Le'eretz HaKodesh. Go, Avram is told to leave his house. They just pick up, they sell the house, sell everything, sell the business. Come to Eretz Israel. We get that from Avram Avinu. Where do we get that, that, uh, the trait that we can say, Kol Man David Rachmana Letav Avid. Where do we say everything is for the good? I call it Tova. People, go through bad stages, and they say, Akore Tova. That is from the test of Avraham Avinu, where he went through famine. There was, he had no food to eat. He was promised he'll be rich, and, and there's no food. And he didn't, didn't uh, ask or question HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So that was the way that Avraham Avinu went before us. So that's really now explanation of what we're talking about over here. Where, how did we reach that, that stage? Now, the next question of the Zohar is why is it called the Nisayon of Avraham Avinu? It's a completely different test. Completely different test before. It's not just giving up yourself. What Yitzhak did, that Avraham Avinu, that was his first test. He passed that already at stage one. When he went into Ur Kasdim, he was willing to give up his life for Kalish Baruch. Right? Yitzhak, he said he would do the same. He told Yishmael, what, what are you so proud of? You did Brit Milah? I, I, if Hashem wants me, I'll give him my whole body. Where do you get that from? From Avraham Avinu. You know. So now on the tenth test, it can't be the same as the first test. It's a completely different level. So it says the Zohar. This is where we're going to go a little bit deeper and try try to stay with me as much as you can. And I'm going to try my best to try and explain. So there's a big concept in Kabbalah with Chesed and Din. We spoke about it before. Let me try and explain a little bit. The attributes of Kadosh Baruch Hu, In some way, we see his action as Chesed. We see him as Rachamim, his kindness, and that's clear to us. Sometimes we see judgment, strict judgment, and that's what we call din. In the Sfirot, we have the, the seven Sfirot, which represents the Sheva Rawim. Avraham and Yitzhak is the first two. connected. Avraham is Chesed, which is Yamin, or the right, and uh, Gvorah is a small, was Dinim, that's represented by Yitzhak Avim. According to the Zohar Kadosh, when we say Elohim Nisa et Avraham, Elohim is Midat Din. Din. Thank you for helping us there, uh, Gilad, starting us off. Midat Din. So Hashem said to Avraham, Elohim Nisa et Avraham, it's time we need you to fix up this Midat of Din. That means, well done, Avraham Avinu, till now you are Mr. Chesed. You are number one Chesed. Chesed le Avraham. And now it's time to put you together with, with, uh, with Din. We need to make you complete and mushlam. We need to be completed also in this midah of Din, which was in Yitzhak Avinu. Maybe... We're going to ask a question. No, we will ask a question. Yeah, we're going to do. We're going to do three small questions first. Okay. Yeah. So the question of the Zohar, why? What's the nisayon of Avraham? Then he says like this. The question. The the pasuk says. Okay, let's just summarize. Two questions we asked. We say we're still left open a little bit, open-ended. Number one, why is it called the test of Avraham, not the test of Yitzhak? What's so great about this test? Number two, we're trying to understand is... One second. Yeah, the Gemara. Why the Gemara said if he doesn't pass this test, then all of his other tests are meaningless. He passed nine tests very well. And one of them was difficult. So why does that make everything nothing? That's the second question. That's clear, that question? 
Why does it mean if he doesn't pass this test, kachna, please, Hashem says, Elohim, pass this test. I need you to do it, this one. Otherwise, all the other ones are nothing and meaningless. Well, he did a very good uh, nine times. That's clear. Yeah, why? So that's what we're trying to explain now. He's done a great, he's done a many tests. He passed all of them. Flying colors. Okay, one test he didn't manage, but doesn't mean everything's nothing. 90% is not zero. It's 90. You got nine out of 10. So that's the second question. I'm going to ask you three small questions now. He gets stopped by a malach. Let me get, let me just read this from the pasuk for you. Okay. He reaches the mountain. Right? It says, Where is the lamb? You're going to be the Ola. Then he builds up the Mizbech. He puts him on the altar, ties him up, and he's ready to offer him up. He takes the knife and he's ready to slaughter his son. And then, The angel of God calls out to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, hold on. Don't touch the son. Don't touch the boy. Don't do nothing. Don't even scratch him. Now I'm going to ask you three beautiful questions and we're going to answer everything. It says that it called out from an angel from Shemaim. Well, of course, where the angels come from. Angels are from Shemaim. Why does it say he's an angel from Shemaim? Where else is he going to come from? Question number one. Question number two. Three angels, we did have three angels who came to visit him, and they're not in the Shamaim. They were no, down. but that was a long time ago. That was 40 years ago now. No, yeah. no, but I'm just saying they were here as well. They mean, they okay, went so here's the one angel. Now, this is the second question. This is the most confusing question. Or Rachel Makadosh asked this question. It says, What do you mean, Kiata Yadati? Now I know, Kiara Elokimata. Now I know, Yara Elokimata. Well, you now I know that you have Yara Shamaim and you fear of God. Avam Avino here. This guy is 140 years old. We know he's Yireh Elohim. From when he was three years old, he was fearing God. He told everyone. He smashed up all the idols. He was the one who threw up into the furnace. He, he was the one who did everything for Kodesh Baruch Now you know Yireh Elohim. How does he explain this? What do you mean, now I know Yireh Elohim? That's the second question. And the third, and this is the biggest question. Here is Malach. The Malach says, Atayadata Yireh Elohim Ata. And then the angel says, "Velo chasachta et bincha et yechidcha mimeni," which means you did not deprive um, your son, your only son, from me. That means you're willing up to give your son for me. Who's talking over here? The angel. Angel. So the angel is saying to Abraham, "I know you fear God because you gave me your son." It sounds like he was offering up the angel, the his son, to the angel. We're not serving angels. We know he wasn't going to do anything angels. Why is the angel saying that? Well, it should be God. If it was God, it makes sense. But the Pasuk doesn't say that. It says, This is what the Malach says to him. Where are you? Don't do anything. You've well done. You've passed your test. Ah, oh, very nice. Uh, Yaakov is saying he was a messenger of Akadosh Baruch Hu, and he was saying in like in the name of God. God is saying, uh, well done, you've passed your test. That's your message. But that, it could be a nice child, but that's not what a Pasuk says. A Pasuk says, the simple reading of the text is the angel talking, and as if he stopped him from his son. Um, as if he offered up your son to him. Again, the Pasuk says, yadati, the angel is saying, now I know, so that's three mind-boggling questions. Orachai Makadosh says that the last final question. And now I'm going to give you this beautiful chat from uh, in one of my favorites. Uh, from I, I read this uh, in by Baruch Rosenblum. This is a beautiful piece. This is a Pia Sod. We're going to explain a little bit of Zohar and a little bit of uh, Ariya Kadosh. Um, and try and bear with me. If you don't get everything, we're going to answer all the five questions. 
<coughs> and maybe add one. Does anyone want to make a suggestion before I go for the Zohar? Okay, so everyone's with me, stay tuned. It's going to be worth it. Says the Zohar, this Chesed Lenis Din, Avram Avinu, he did nine tests, okay? All his tests was in the realm of being Avram Isha Chesed. Now he needed to perfect the Midah of Din, of Gvura. That's why it says, Elohim Nisa at Avraham. Comes along Elohim Midah and Din says, Avraham, I need a test for you. Please pass this test. And he says, Nisa et Avraham, et is lerabot Avraham, Yitzchak. That means he also, there was some kind of also Nisan for Yitzchak. He said, this is the Lashon of the Zohar, Kivin Shineka Dalide Avraham, Nichlalu Esh Vemayim. They were combined fire and water. How do you explain that? That means fire and water represents fire, Gvura, Din, Mayim is Midat Chesed, Midat Racham. I know what it means that Nimteku Dine Yitzchak Bechesed Avram. Yitzchak was all Gvura, and Avraham was Chesed. And now, when he does the the Akedat Yitzchak, then they make Shalom between them, and that combines Mayim and Esh, fire and water, which is called Chesed in Gvura. This is the Pirush of the Sulam on the Zohar. Now, the angels that we talked about in the beginning. Who came along? Gabriel and Michael. So those two angels, Gabriel was the Gvoa. He came to destroy Sodom. He was Midat Adin. Michael, and says that the, the Gvoa says they were colors. The fire of the, of the, sorry, the angels were represented by colors. Gabriel is red. That is Gvoa in Dinim. Michael is Lavan. That's white chesed. Okay? <laughs> Try not to get lost over here, but just stay with me. He says there's, some, there's a concept which is called mamtik, mamtik et adini, which means you sweeten the, the strict judgment, makes it softer, makes it more, more bearable. This is one of the reasons maybe could suggest that when we have the wine on Shabbat, we use red Kiddush wine, and we make a bracha on the wine, we mamtik the dinim. We add in some drops of water, which is called mizuga yain. The water is maim, is rachamim. According to one of the Rishonim, the Ramban is born in Shulchan Aruch, not the Aracha. Shulchan Aruch says you can make Kiddush wine on white wine. But according to the Ramban, and the Ramban was a big Kabbalist, maybe one of the earliest Kabbalists, even way before the Ari Kadosh, he says it's completely possible even with Yevit. You don't do white Kiddush on white wine. It has to be red. Because you mantik it in him. If you need red wine represents the dinim, and when you make a kiddush, you're making bracha, that's you mantik the dinim. All the time when we do kiddush, Shabbat, or Chagim, Brit Milah, Chupa, we always use wine and we mantik the dinim. We make it sweet, that's part of it. So here says uh, the Zohar, Avraham Avinu had to come along and operate himself within the midah of Gvura, dinim. When Yitzhak understood that he was the one who's going to be offered up, he says, Vayomer Avi, my father, what are you doing? You are Chesed Avram. You are Chesed. What do you mean you're going to offer me up? You're Chesed. You told everyone not to do that. Now you're going to do that. And his response is, Vayomer Hineni Beni. He says, Hineni, me now, Hineni Beni. I am Beni, my son. I'm now representing you, Mida. Until now, I was Chesed, and I was operating in Chesed, but now I have to do something which is in Midat, midat Adin. This is something much more, way deeper. This is what is Elohim told me to do. Elohim, your Elohase. Elohim, Midat Adin told me this is where I'm going to be the Se, is Ola Beni. So he was responding to him. My father, you are Midat Chesed. I'm telling him, hey, now I am acting as Beni, as you, Mida of Midat Agvura. Midat Adin. So it says the Riyah Kadosh, it's all fits into the Pesukim. Vayishkem Avram Baboker in the morning. In the morning is Midat Chesed. Like we say in Tehili, Lagid Baboker 
Chasdecha. So when Avram comes up in the morning, he's representing the, the trip of Chesed. When he takes with him the Esh and Ma'achelet, the knife and the fire, that's Midat Adin. So he's now doing everything with Midat Chesed and changing it into Gvura, putting it together. That's Vayom Ageneni Beni. That's the Chesed La Abraham and the Beni, the Gvura of Midat of uh, Yitzchak. And when he's putting together the fire and the water, according to the Zohar, the Esh, which is Gvura, and the Maim, which is uh, Chesedim, they go together. Shneem Yachdav is Rashi Tevot, Shin and Yud. Shin and Yud is small and Yamin, which is left is Gevura and Yamin is uh, is Chesed. So these two Midot they come together and then they form together Esh and Mayim. That's the Shneem Yachdav. Now we understand if it's Esh and Mayim. That understands what it is referring to the Gemara. The Gemara says, why is it called Shemaim? Because it's a combination of Esh and Maim. And he says, when a person does, so Avram Vinu is talking about Midat Chesed, and the Akedah is representing a contradiction to his trait of Chesed. When Avram Vinu can contradict his own trait, his nature, and do the will of God against his nature, that is his biggest test. So why is this number 10 the biggest test? Because the trait of Avraham, which is chesed, is being kind. And now he has to do the exact opposite of his nature and offer up his son. That is the biggest test, number 10. And that's why the Gemara says, if you wouldn't have passed this test, then all the other ones are meaningless. Because they would have said, listen, your nature is just to be kind. So you're all nice to everybody. And you did everything good to everyone else. You weren't complaining. But when it comes to this one, which is against your nature, you didn't do it. So all of the things that you did, it wasn't because you love God. It was because it was your nature. But when we say, Avraham, Ahuvi, my beloved Abraham, because he had his love. Ki aza kamavit ahava. Kasha kishol kinar lishapea rishpe esh shalhebetya. The, the the coals of fire are the love of Avraham Avinu. It was burning up from like Vura. And here is the proof when he, he managed to, to change his nature of Chesed into Gvura for the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Now we understand what it's been. Bekral of Malach Min HaShamayim. Min HaShamayim means Esh and Mayim. It says the Gaon with Vilna. Every mitzvah a person does creates an angel. An angel. It creates a malach. Which malach does it create? It depends. If you did a mitzvah happy, b'smcha, b'zrizud, b'tlavot, you got a massive monster malach. If you do the mitzvah reluctantly, right? How is it going to come out the malach? A little miskin, handicapped, uh, where this is going to be malach miskin. Says the God Mirvina, this is the beautiful Psha in the Pasuk. I think this is one of the most beautiful Psha I've ever seen in the Pasuk. He says, when the Malach said, uh, let me read the Pasuk, mina this was the angel that was created from this Maaseh Mitzvah of Avraham and Nakedat Yitzchak. From the Eshen Maim that was created. Esh and Maim, Chesed and Gvura, this Maaseh of Akedah was created an angel. This was Malach, Min HaShamayim, was created from the Esh and Maim, from this mitzvah, says the Gon Rabbina. And then he says, Ki ata yadati ki ki ata. Now I know that you are truly fear of God, because now I know that you, you uh, uh, overcome your nature of Chesed and did this action of Gvura. You went against your nature to do this mitzvah. Now I know you're Yerei Elohim, because that proves that all of the Nisiyonot that you had, you did it Hashem Shamayim. How do I know that? From this mitzvah that you did in completing and creating this me. So the angel said, you created me with your mitzvah. And I know how much you fear of God and how much you did this mitzvah with love. Be many. From me. I am a testimony to your Yeret Shemayim, says the angel. The angel says, I was created from your mitzvah. You didn't deprive God you didn't deprive the mitzvah, and that's how you create it. How do I know this? Memeni. 
I am the proof. The fact that I exist, that is proof that you're Yerat Shammai. Because otherwise I wouldn't have been created. Look at me, I'm such a strong angel, I'm so powerful. How did I reach this high level? Ask me from your mitzvah. That is proof that you're Yerat Shammai. Okay. And that is the beauty. That is the beauty of this pshat. Why did Avram Avinu, why did Gabriel come? Why did he come to Avram Avinu? He was meant to say to, to destroy Saddam. So why did he come to Avram Avinu? Go to Saddam. But Michael was Chesed and Gabriel was Gvura. They both came together to Avraham because they were representing these two combinations of Chesed Avram and Gvura Yitzchak. And when Avraham Avinu accepting his guests, accepting guests is which midah? Chesed, of course. Of course it's chesed. But what does he give them? What does he feed them? He feeds them three tongues and from bulls, parot. Par, this is pnei shor mea small. Shor is from the left. Shor is from the dinim. Par, Represents the dinim and vuot. There's a concept of par dinim in Kabbalah. Um, the the parim is one of the offerings that we give up for for the chatat of the tibur, and that's par is referring to dinim. So there's a specific reason why he went for the par. He could have gone for a lamb, right? And he could have nice lamb chops. You can feed three people with one lamb. You don't need to have three bulls and give them tongues. Why do you give them tongues? There's lots of very good meat without the tongue. Look, there's a lot of good meat, right? You got the asado, you got the the the, rib, the lamb ribs. Oh, there's good meat. You don't need to give the tongue. Why? It's about Moroccans. Yeah, it's Moroccan, but there's a lot of good meat there. We don't we don't have to go for the tongues. But there's something specific about the tongue. Why? Because the tongue can be as the powerful to be good and the powerful to build and power to destroy. bayad. With the tongue. That means the tongue can serve also the chesed and also the gvura. That is the combination of two of them. And why do you offer them khardal? Khardal is the, the, the mustard, is the kharif, but the kharif is also, it can also be sharp, but it can also be uh, tasty. It can be mamtik the, the gachelet, mamtik the basara. The ash can also make things sweet when you cook. Onions it has sharp taste when they're fresh. But if you cook them, it becomes sweet. How does it do that? From fire. So you see that whole ability of gvura to be mamtik uh, through this, the, this khalif, through the esh. Through the esh and through this khadal. That's how he did everything. So all you see, Avraham Avinu was combining this from the angels was the beginning of the combination of the sphere of chesed and gvura. And then we come up to another reason why he gave them basar and then he gave them khalaf. What color is khalaf? Chalav is milk. Chalav is white. That was the color of Michael, of Chesed. Now, what color is red meat? I'll give you a clue. It's red. 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 So, what, what does that represent? Which mida? Dinim. So, Gvura. So, again, when he gives them Chesed, he gives them Chamat Bakar, milk. And then he gives them also Basar, red meat. There is also, again, being uh, combining, being mitzaref and being mitzaref, being mamtik, the gvurot and the chasadim. And that is the midat of uh, I'm going to do another one minute and maybe just wrap this up. And then how is it relevant to us? So we've explained that. Is it clear how we answered all the questions now? Why is it in for Avram Avinu more than Yitzhak? Because Avram had to go against his nature. That's why it was called the, the big test of Avraham Avinu. And that was if he didn't do his test, then none of the tests would have counted. Why is it called Minash Shemaim? We said Esh and Maim is a combination of them. Why does he say, Ataya Dati Because now I know, look what you've done. You've completed this, this Nida of Vura. And we explained what does it mean, Mimeni? Because it's from me, I was created as a result of your mitzvah. Now to end off, 
I just had a personal question. Why does it end at the end of the day? It is called Akedat Yitzchak. It's not called Akedat Avram. Because first of all, that's what happened. It was the, the Akedah means the tying up of Yitzchak. Why was Yitzchak tied up? Does anyone know why he was tied up? He doesn't slip. He doesn't slip. Yeah. yeah. What's the point? Why? Why? What's the problem of slipping? Keep kasher. So very good. So Rashi says I would keep kasher because if it would move, maybe it would become a mum. But this is another reason. Another reason because somebody if he jumps is if he's holding tight, then it's be um, the shechita is more clean. It comes more quickly and straighter, right? So there is a meda of chesed and rachamim in tying up Yitzchak. That he shouldn't be uh, uh, free to move and um, in the frustration of the mitzvah. He should be able to be tied up and still. So even in the Akedah itself of Yitzchak, there was chesed. And Yitzchak, that was the gvura. So again, we've got the combination of chesed and gvura, the chesed of Avraham, and the Akedah Yitzchak of the Din. So it's like the tying up, which is the chesedim of the Din. Again, being Mamtik the Dinim. So again, this is a high concept, but we'll just see how many, so many things in the Torah come together. Now, what has it got to do with us yeah, in the month of November 2020? What is this whole concept of Nisayan? Am I Avraham Avinu? Do I have 10 tests? Do I have one test? So I want to share with you two short stories, uh, maybe one, because we're running out of time. We'll do some Malacha. The the Tana de Beliau says, Chayav kol Adam Lomar. Every person, Maor, Joe, Gilad, Netanel, Yaakov, Meir, everybody, Yaron, kol Adam Chayav Lomar, Emata Yagiu Maasai Le Maasai Afotai, Abraham Yitzhak Yaakov. When are my actions are going to be like the actions of my fathers? Abraham and Yitzhak Yaakov. Listen, I, I come from a prestigious family. Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, these are the world greats. And I have to live up to that name. When am I going to have the, my actions are going to be closer resembling those? When am I going to be able to do my actions to do the will of God? So the short story is, uh, and there's many examples of this, but one man came to the rabbi and said, listen, rabbi, I need your help. I'm, I'm very atzbani. How do you say atzbani in English? Frustrated. Frustrated is mild. Hungry. Nervous. And nervous, but atzbani means he gets his mit atzben the whole time. Hot tempered. Hot tempered, yeah. Hot tempered, yeah. I'm hot tempered. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So I'm, I'm atzbani, I'm hot tempered. I got a problem. What should I do? So he said, Oh, really? Okay, listen, just wait outside a few minutes. Um, come back in a. Oh, let me think about it. He sends him outside and he closes the door and he leaves the door drop open. And he says to his uh, Shamash, he says, come listen, the, the guy outside, he said he's Atzba and he's hot tempered. I wanted to test him out. Just, just see how much you can push his uh, temper, how temper he is, right? Now the guy overhears that. And, uh, and okay, he knows now he's being tested. Now the shamash comes by with a gla glass of water, you know, is like offering him a glass of water or is drinking by, and he pretends to accidentally drop it on him. So he gets wet. He's like, oh no, I'm terribly sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Oh no, don't worry, it's fine. It's just water, it's gonna dry, it's okay. Everything is okay. Don't worry about it. No, I'm terribly sorry, I can't believe it. That can worry nothing about it, it's clump. Okay, doesn't look so atzbani. Then he goes back into the kitchen and makes himself a tea. He walks back again. And, you know, accidentally, you know, pretends to drop it on him accidentally. And this is like the second time now. You know, the first time, okay, I'll let you. The second time, he's like, he's like, oh my goodness, what have I done? I'm so sorry. No, oh, it's okay, don't worry. Look, it's okay, things happen. And then, uh, and it's, you know, it's already the second time and it's hot. So the Shamash says, listen, I don't know what to do, this guy. It's, it's, no, it's not hot tempered. You know, I put hot tea. Listen, I'm going to go for the kill. He goes, makes a black coffee. 
piping hot black coffee. Yeah. The guy comes in, does the same trick again. All black, filthy, burning hot. The guys get half burnt, he's scolded, and he's like, no, it's okay, don't worry, yeah, we'll just clean it, it's fine, it's fine. And the Shamash goes back to the rabbi, says, listen, rabbi, I don't know what you're talking about, hot tempered, this guy's an angel. The guy, I, I did water, I did tea, I did black coffee, the guy's an angel, it's nothing, it's like nothing can get, I can't get him. He said, call him in. He said, what are you saying? You're saying you're atzbani, you got a problem with the temper? i never seen somebody like you. He said, Rabbi, you don't understand, but when you, uh, when you told the, the Shamash to try and uh, get, me, get me started, I overheard. The door was a bit open. And I heard you doing it. So that's how I did it. And the Rabbi said, yeah, I know. I was the one who left the door open because I wanted you to hear. When a person is prepared for the test, then he can hold himself. When you know you're being tested, then you stand up, you bring up all your strength. Every day in Avraham Avinu's life, you know, this is a day when Hashem is an opportunity to show how much I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm going to stand up whatever test he gives me. And this is what we have to be ready for. You know, every day in our life is a test for us. Are we going to live up to the challenge of what Hashem wants from us? Once we have that in our mindset, it's much easier. We can go up to, to, to pass all the tests. We can make Hashem very proud of us. And you know, when the time comes, we can say, yeah, I'm a descendant of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But when we get unexpected, and we don't know we're being tested, and then we failed, and then we feel bad, because we know, you know, this is something we could have, we could have done. We could have managed it. So having that in mind, just, just think about, you know, all the tests of Abraham, you know, where he went even against his nature. And do what we can to live up to our nature and be like Avraham and it's like a miracle. Uh, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the show. Can I? And um, if, if Maya would like to start recording, everyone's invited for 10 minutes of uh, halakha. Can I ask something? Yeah, please. We have a question. When was Sarah know this? Oh. So maybe, maybe we'll keep that for next week for Chaya Sarah. Well, I've got an, I've got a question. Please, Jen. What did she say or think when God told Avram to kill his son? So she wasn't aware of it, and she found that next week, and that's when when she dies. But we'll leave it for next week. It's good questions, and uh, we'll prepare a nice show for next week, right now, to answer your questions. Um, do you want to do the recording with your Yeah. Okay. <laughs>